This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And if you're looking for some new crispy roll cards, <laughs> Crimson Roll, if you're looking for some cards of the new set, any card you need, by the way, check them out. Link is in the description down below. Well, hello there, random person on the internet who has seen the title and the thumbnail, so I'm um, just gonna cut right to the chase here. Today we're playing Mirror March, a six mana enchantment that says, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, flip a coin until you lose a flip. For every flip you want, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens gain haste, exile them at the beginning of the next end step. So half of the time the card does absolutely nothing, but there's always a chance. I mean, you you could just win a thousand flips in a row, right? It's a pretty slim chance, but there's a chance. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! Now imagine somebody would just record gameplay with Mirror March for days and then edit it together, just showing you the coolest parts. That'd be a great idea, right? Let's get into the deck tech. To play Mirror March, we need ramp and creatures to copy and oh, some of you might already know where this is going. It's Risen Reef time, baby. The purest form of value, one of the most beautiful triggers to put on a stack. And if we copy them, each copy will trigger off each other, giving us some crazy ramp and card advantage. And now look at Crimson Row coming in with another beautiful way to copy Risen Reef. Mirror Home Mimic can just straight up clone Risen Reef or any other creature on the battlefield and we can disturb it as ghastly mimicry an hour that will create a token copy of enchanted creature at the beginning of our upkeep. Now there's a lot more to be said about this deck and uh, you can check out my article for some numbers and some tips and tricks but all this talking about copying Risen Reef, I can't, I can't wait anymore. We gotta get that value so I'll just explain the rest along the way and jump right into the action. Alright, ooh, starting off with a mulligan, that's a bit too slow for us. Ooh, turn to Risen Reef, don't mind if I do. And also, I'm greedy, let's bottom a land here, we'll surely draw another one, right? Opponent starts off with a Leyline of Sanctity, okay, and a forest. We play Sanctum and Lanova Elf, pass the turn. Opponent, another forest and just passes back, there's another Sanctum, play it. Play Risen Reef, get a Seasoned Pyromancer, ugh, might have been worth it to shock in that Steam Vents to maybe get double red next turn, but if everything goes well, we're just gonna copy our Risen Reef anyways. Opponent plays another forest and Lanova Tribe, okay, what's going on here? We draw Terror of the Peaks, shock in a Steam Vents and now it's time for that value. Copy Risen Reef, get two triggers, get a land and a Gilded Goose and pass the turn. Opponent, Nissa who shakes the world, okay, untaps the land, swings in for three, cultivate, get two forests, play a forest, in search of greatness. So now that lane line makes sense, if they had that earlier, they could have cheated in Nissa on turn three and that would have been pretty sweet actually. Ah, we draw another Gilded Goose here. Uh, let's just play the Goldspan Dragon so we can swing in and kill Nissa. Create a treasure and since Goldspan Dragon makes treasures produce two mana, we could play these Gilded Geese here, but it's better to just wait and discard them later to the Seasoned Pyromancer to get some Risen Reef value. Opponent, Grys, draws a card, plays a Khan, which will shut down our treasures. Minus Khan, gets a Golos, oh yeah, makes sense, gets a World Tree and they can activate Golos next turn and there's nothing we can do to stop them. Well, let's just play Goldspan Dragon, swing at Khan and our opponent, create two treasures. Khan is down so we can use our treasures again. They produce two mana each, so we have six mana, which is exactly enough to play a Risen Reef. Get three Risen Reef trigger, get a land, a Risen Reef and Prosperous Innkeeper. And let's play Season Pyromancer so we can discard two cards and and draw two cards and for every non-land card we discard, we create a 1-1 elemental token which will trigger our Risen Reefs. Ooh, there's a mirror match, get some cards, get some lands, play a breeding pool and pass the turn and just hope our opponent isn't too lucky here, they scry to the top, play a land, activate Golos, maybe it's not too bad. Oh my god, and that is too bad. <laughs> okay, that's an Ugin. Taps Lanova tribe and annihilates our board. I mean, at least we did ramp a lot. They play a prismatic bridge and a chromatic lantern and swing for six. 
Wow, they turned it around big time here. But hey, we do have Mirror March, so there's always a chance. What was happening? Did Arena just crash? Okay, no. <laughs> okay, so seems like our opponent emoting is too much for Arena. Okay, kind of scary. So let's play land, play Prosperous Inkeeper. <laughs> Arena, please. <sighs> Thank you. Okay, play Prosperous Inkeeper. It will create at least one treasure and maybe gain us a bunch of life. I've made a spreadsheet here to see what happens if we hit a certain number of flips and the chances to do so. They're also in the article, so check it out. Link is in the description. But for now, let's see if we can get lucky here. Uh, we won one flip, so that's fine. Back to four mana. Play another one. Let's see it. Whoop, won another flip. That's already better than average, so I'm not gonna complain here. Back up to four mana. Let's play Risen Reef. If we win one flip, we can already attack down this Ugin. But Risen Reef also becomes insane in multiples, since all of these copies will trigger off each other. So yeah, maybe not win six flips in a row here, otherwise we don't have cards in our library anymore. Gain some life. Get a land. Oh. All right. Well, swing at Ugin. Creatures get exiled and pass the turn. Prismatic Bridge gets a Warren Klex. Wow, so they can plus this Ugin up to five, killing our Risen Reef. Activate Golos again. Uh, okay, it could have been worse. They play Alanova Visionary, draw a card, play a Seeker, Gilded Goose, create a food. And Lanova Elf emptied their entire hand and swings in 412. Down to 7 again, but there's a pretty high chance we win here, especially with this Mirror Hall Mimic here. Nice. So let's play Terror of the Peaks, gain some life. Let's pull up the little spreadsheet here so you can see we only need to win two flips to deal 20 damage to our opponent. Everything else would just be gravy. Let's see if we can get lucky. Yeah, okay, we won one flip. That's better than nothing, but we still have the Mirror Hall Mimic that can copy the Terror of the Peaks again. Let's get another shot here. Okay. Ouch. They are down to one, but they are technically up to four since a Seeker allows them to tap legendary creatures for mana so they can eat that food and gain three life. Um, so I guess we have to win another flip here. Play Tangled Floor Hedron. They eat the food, we gain some life. Oh yeah, there it is. Wow, what a good time to win a flip. And what a close game. Wow, both players just threw insane bombs at each other. And you could really see the power of the clones in this deck in this match. The first Mirror Hall Mimic just copied a Risen Reef just to get some value. And later in the game, we copied Terror of the Peaks to finish off the game. Note that Mirror Hall Mimic can always copy our opponent's creatures as well. And that also counts for the backside. So let's say our opponent plays something cool like a Decoy Bolas and we discard the Mirror Hall Mimic, then we can play the ghastly mimicry on our opponent's bowlers and from that point on every upkeep we get a copy of their bowlers and they have to discard a card every turn and as you can see here opponent really appreciated this one talking about appreciating things um i'd really appreciate it if you would tap that like button real quick come on just a little tap all right uh thank you next game all right, this hand is a bit slow, but I guess it's a keep. We are on the draw. Say hello to our opponent. Mountain and Grim Initiate, so mono red cavalcade maybe. We just play a Triome past the turn. Blood Crypt tapped and swings in for one. Okay. Let's play Sanctum, play Prosperous Innkeeper, create a treasure. Opponent plays a land and Death Baron, so black red zombies. Okay. We draw Lanova Elf, play it, play land, pass the turn. Opponent, Lord of the Accursed, so definitely zombies, swings in for 6, we take it down to 12. Draw Season Pyromancer, play Goldspan Dragon, play a land, swing in with the dragon, create a treasure. And let's hope to survive here. Uh oh, that's uh, Judith, pumps the team, swings in, we're down to one. Okay, so we draw a Triome and we have a seven mana with this treasure. So let's swing in with the Goldspan Dragon, create another treasure. So we have nine mana, which is just enough to play Mirror March. 
And Season Pyromancer, get alive. Mirror March, oh, one flip that might be enough to stay alive here. Let's make sure we discard as many non land cards as we can to create some blockers and gain some life. Well, life total back up to seven and we got some blockers. Play a Triome, pass the turn. Opponent swings with the whole team. We just jump block here because we don't want to kill any of our opponent's creatures. Otherwise, Judith will shoot down our Prosperous Innkeeper. Yep, make some blocks. Ah, oh, hard fire. Well, I guess that does it. Wow, we gotta get a bit lucky here. Oh, Risen Reef, you love to see it. Well, let's play Prosperous Innkeeper. There's always a chance to get a million life here. Well, win one flip. That's actually pretty nice because these treasures tap for two mana, so we're up to seven mana here. Play Risen Reef, gain some life. Risen Reef triggers, get another Risen Reef. One flip, okay, create another Risen Reef. Two triggers, two lands. Play another Risen Reef, get some more life. Three Risen Reef triggers. Oh boy, all right. So that's 18 Risen Reef triggers. Let's just fast forward through these, but let's get one land into our hand since it might not look like it, but we still have a land drop here. Yep, here we are. And we managed to not get a single Prosperous Innkeeper, so I guess we gotta find one. Play a Gilded Goose, gain some life. Oh, okay. Um. Play a land, swing in, create another treasure. Sacrifice the treasure, play a Lanawa Elf, gain some life, win one flip. Use Lanawa Elf to play a Tangled Florahedron, gain some life, Risen Reef trigger, oh, win one flip, that's fine. That's five more Risen Reef triggers. Ah, uh, yeah, let's use the Florahedron to play a Gilded Goose. Win two flips, all right, all right. So up to three mana again. Use the mana from the Gilded Goose to play a Tangled Florahedron. Uh, by the way, uh, we shouldn't do this. We stabilized the board a long time ago and we might just die from value here. Uh, just saying. But then again, I'm not here to make optimum plays. I'm here to copy Risen Reefs and flip coins, so... Well, let's do that. Gain some life. Oh, there's a Prosperous Innkeeper. Oh, and a Terror of the Peaks. Nice. Oh, boy. Okay, that's five flips. So, yep, gain some life. Draw the rest of our library. And I guess we have to win now. Prosperous Innkeeper. Okay. Ay, 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 ay. Play another Innkeeper. Oh, never mind. I guess I play a Tangled Florahedron. That's pretty bad. Oh, huh, never mind. We won two flips, so we got the mana back anyways. Okay, now let's play a Prosperous Innkeeper. Oh, win no flip again. Okay, so we're up to six mana. So let's play Terror of the Peaks. And I mean, how hard can it be to win one flip here, right? Oh. Well, that's bad. Uh, Lanoa F, win four flips, maybe? Oh, God. Well, there's only one thing we can do here, so let's hit our opponent with the GG's. Call an ambulance! Call an ambulance! But not for me! That's right, we still have lethal. We can activate these seasoned pyromancers from our graveyard before our draw step to get elementals to trigger the terror of the peaks and still shoot our opponents for lethal. Wow, what a close. Oh my god! Well, never mind then. I guess I call an ambulance for me then. Yikes! Okay, let's still get the elementals, and that is GG. <laughs> now let's be honest here, we just lost this game to our own greed. We should have just stopped playing spells and passed the turn once we stabilized the board, but that can always happen in this deck. If you have a mirror march and play a risen reef, there's always a chance you hit like seven flips and have your entire deck in your hand, and then if you don't win the game before the next draw step, you just lose the game. Now there are ways to prevent this, and I go over this in my article, and you can see the cards on screen here, but I didn't include them because I like to live dangerously, and next game. Ooh, okay, this is almost a turn to Risen Reef on the play. We just need to draw an untapped land, play a Gilded Goose, pass the turn, opponent Forest, and Lanoa Elves. Ah, oh, that's not an untapped land at all. Okay, play a Triome, play another Goose, swing into a Zerd Dominance and pass the turn. Opponent, Overgrown Tune, tapped, pass the turn. Looks like our intimidation tactic worked here. 
Let's just play Risen Reef, get a land and pass the turn. Opponent shocks in the Temple Garden and Hero of Precinct 1 passes back. Let's play Season Pyromancer, discard 2, draw 2, create 2 elementals, get a Florahedron and a land and play the Florahedron as a land. Opponent plays a land and a Johnny the Great Hearted, okay, creates a token, pumps the team, swings in. We are down to 16. We draw Triome. Now we could just play a Mirror March here, but an Absan Hero of Precinct 1 deck has so many answers for this that I think it's best to just get some more value here first. Play Glass Pool Mimic, copy Risen Reef, get two Risen Reef triggers. Play Florahedron, get two more triggers. Oh wow, really would have loved some lands here. Play a Triome, pass the turn. Opponent plays a land. Plays a Mara, creates a token, pluses a journey, gets 3 life and whoop, just passed the turn, sweet. Now it's time to play Mirror March here. Prosperous Innkeeper, create a treasure. Uh, okay, win one flip, so we only had 2 mana, so we can't even play the Glass Pool Mimic. I guess we can try to get lucky with the Gilded Goose here. Oh, no. Well, I guess it's not our turn then, pass the turn, pretty boring, but next turn's gonna be pretty cool if our opponent can't deal with the Mirror March. Oh, Liliana is super fine, okay, creates a zombie, pumps the team, swings in, we make some blocks, down to 14, and now we're in a pretty good situation here. Play Season Pyromancer, gain some life, let's go. Okay, one flip, that's already insane value with two Risen Reef, so let's discard two, draw two, oh, just some lands, but we do get these elementals, so four Risen Reef triggers, get some lands, discard two more cards, only create one elemental this time, still two Risen Reef triggers, play a land, play Gold Spend Dragon, win one flip, okay. And now that this treasure creates 2 mana, we can use the Glass Pool Mimic to copy the Goldspan Dragon. If we win 2 flips here, we win the game on the spot. Okay, 1 flip. We can attack our opponent for 16 in the air here, down to 1, but create 4 treasures along the way, which equate to 8 mana. So, hit our opponent, down to 1, play Risen Reef, Prosperous Innkeeper, 3 Risen Reef triggers, get some cards. Win two flips, <laughs> all right. That's 10 more Risen Reef triggers. Yep, get some triggers. Play a Prosperous Innkeeper. Get some life. Win one flip, create another treasure. Deck up to seven mana. Play Tangled Florahedron. Get some life. Risen Reef triggers. There's Terror of the Peaks. Win one flip, that's five more Risen Reef triggers, but we already got the Terror, so play it. Let's see it, one flip would be enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> Three flips, wow, that's way enough. That's 45 damage, and that is GG. Now let's be honest here, it would have been enough to just play Mirror March, play Terror of the Peaks and get lucky. And that is true for pretty much every game. Like we can just do a regular thing, play Mana Dogs, play Risen Reef, doesn't matter if our opponent deals with our board, we just need to get to Mirror March as quick as possible, untap with it, play a Terror of the Peaks and then just get lucky. In this clip uh, we got very lucky and won 4 flips which is 80 damage to the face. Not necessary but certainly pretty cool. And oh my god, almost 20 minutes already. Um, yeah, I guess that's it for the gameplay. Psych! Bonus game! Alright, you already know there's gonna be a bonus game in this one. That's a mulligan. I guess that's a keep. Uh, bottom the timeless witness, play a Lano Elf. Opponent, place a Swarm and a Shambling Ghast. We draw Tangled Florahedron, play a Lano Elf and the Florahedron. Now if we draw an untapped red source here, we can play a turn 3 Mirror March, which would be pretty insane. And Deadly Dispute, sacrificing the Shambling Ghast so they can kill our Lano Elf. Ouch, never mind the turn 3 Mirror March here. And Graf Digger's Cage main deck, okay. Oh, and there would have been the untapped red sauce. Wow, okay. Swing in for two. Opponent, plays the land, and the Celestis, okay. And another Shambling Ghast, passes the turn. Ah, uh, a Trium, <laughs> play it, pass the turn. Celestis flips, opponent does not use the ability. Shambling Ghast, Field of Ruin. Activates it on our Triome. Well, let's hope they don't do this again because I'm greedy and there's only one forest in this deck. We draw a Stomping Ground, play Mirror March, play Stomping Ground, pass the turn. Let's see what our opponent does here. Ethereal Absolution, wow. All right, this kills like half of our deck on the spot. 
so all of our risen reefs, prosperous innkeepers, they're all gonna die immediately. That's pretty bad. Kids are aboard, pumps they are aboard, they swing in for four. Let's play Goldspan Dragon, maybe we can get lucky here. <laughs> well, okay then, win. <laughs> Nine flips, I guess? Swing in for 30? <laughs> well, what's happening though? Did... Did Arena just crash? What? No way. Oh my god. Okay, let's reconnect. Oh, we're still in the game. Never mind. Wow. Unexpected match complete. Winner is a draw? Excuse me? <laughs> oh my god. Oh no, this is so bad. <laughs> no. <sighs> wow. All right, that's very frustrating. And you might even say I clickbaited you with this thumbnail. I mean, winning nine flips in a row is pretty unlikely, but it's not what you would consider a jackpot. But then again, Arena crashed immediately afterwards, so I don't even know if it's possible to win more flips. And it's certainly very hard to test. So let me know what's your craziest Mirror March experience. Have you hit the one in a million? Let me know in the comments. I've recorded 11 hours and played 130 games with this deck, and this is the best I got. I choose to show you the fun game and not the games where I just play Mirror March and win on the spot because that would have been pretty boring by the third match. Obviously, not even sure if I need to mention this. This is not a competitive deck. If you have to win coin flips to win, uh, that's not really a consistent strategy. Risen Reef into Season Pyromancer is pretty strong though and there might be a competitive deck with this somewhere. But with that being said, that's it for the video. Remember to tap that like button. More videos on the right here. Subscribe to the channel to not miss another one. And I will see you in the next one.